some, some other points to, of, of clarification or points of note with, with the pension is that membership rights are lost if the contract is subsequently retendered. So if you tube it over, um, you retain your pension rights given the, with the caveats that I just mentioned around earlier, some of the early retirement benefits. However, <coughs> however if, if the contract is subsequently retendered and an organisation wins that tender that doesn't have what they call a direction, which means it's entitled, so it's not of a corporate form that's entitled to, to, to provide the NHS pension, then the, the, the NHS pension rights are, are lost. However, if the new employer did not qualify to apply for a direction, i.e. for a direction to continue the, the NHS pension rights, then the new employer has to provide a comparable pension. Membership rights are also lost if the individual moves on to work for a non-NHS funded work. So if you work in an organisation and, and the work that you, you then move to do is not NHS funded, the entitlement to the NHS pension is lost. And also the pensions passport does not apply to staff who, who are not transferred under TUPE. So pa staff working now that are transferred are covered by the NHS pension with, with the caveats that I've already discussed. However, new staff that were being employed, whether they were from the open market or whether they were from an another NHS provider, would not necessarily, would not automatically be entitled to the NHS pension scheme. I'm going to take some water, just forgive me, I've had a cough and a cold. Under this new type of provision, staff should have the first call to offer pr to provide services under new organisational arrangements, i.e. you have the first option to provide those services as NHS. As, a, as part of an NHS organisation in order to build on existing clinical networks <coughs> and offer stability to staff. Existing staff and management should be given the opportunity to propose either the creation of social enterprises through the right to request scheme or to become a community NHS trust, so foundation trust, sorry. So there's a, there, there is also a right to, to request to become a community foundation trust and the process for that is slightly different in that you have to, you have to become an NHS trust in the first place to, to be standalone for a period of time and then go through the monitor, um, monitor of, of, of the organisation that, that gives foundation status to, to, to trusts. The concept of first call gives PCT scope to agree contracts with new provider without tendering them, which we've already touched on. So the, the PCT doesn't have to tender services, it's able to provide them to, 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 to um, social enterprises that have come from the provider services. There are a range of different routes to this and, and, and to community foundation trusts, but the PCT must assess staff preference, so that's your preference as part of this consultation process, and service, service sustainability. So they must also assess what, the, what is best for the patient and make an assessment of what is best for the sustainability in the long term. Hence this, this process that we're in, the, the options for change consultation. <coughs> This detail is, um, is detailed in Appendix 4 of um, uh, Enabling new, <laughs> new Patterns of Provision document, which we have copies of over there. The Department of Health will provide centrally a high-level business case template for staff to use to exercise the right to request. This will need to be read in conjunction with the social enterprise making a difference. From spring 2009, staff will be able to access business support from accredited providers. PCTs will assess the right to request against their service and supply side strategy and against nationally co-produced criteria designed to help the PCT, help PCT understanding of the social enterprise element of the request. Expertise on social enterprise will be available to PCTs at this stage. If the social enterprise or community foundation trust application fails or is withdrawn, the PCT retains responsibility for the services provided and will need to ensure continuing service delivery. One option may be to open up the market to other potential providers. I mean, that's quite detailed. And as I say, in the, 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 we, there's lots of copies of the appendices over there. There's, there's appendix, appendices A for the pensions and there's appendices 4 which sets out um, these new, new types of provision. 
Any assessment that the PCT makes needs to be approved by the Strategic Health Authority. And if the PCT does not approve a right, a right to request, the SHA will review that decision. And the Social Enterprise Unit will also provide guidance and access to specialist advice for any PCTs and their staff who are considering a social enterprise. In conclusion, we've, I've offered, tried to offer here um, a clarification on, on how to apply for the right to request, the business forms that are acceptable to become a social enterprise, and some clarity on the pension scheme. As I've already um, mentioned, there are lots of places to go for, for information, including the two key documents that, that I mentioned at the start of the, um, the, pro, the, the presentation, of which there are some copies over there, which are available also on the, in, in, um, on the internet if you want to look them up, and will also be put on your local trust intranet. Um, and just to be clear, we've aimed to clarify the current position and not to promote any particular corporate form or any option, any one of the options that are, are on offer to you at the moment. Um, HR and myself will be available on the stand at the end of this process, if any, um, at the end of these pro the presentations, if anyone would like to come and speak to us. Thank you very much.